So now that we got all four bolts loose, let's see if we can pry this upper valve cover off. All right, so I went to loosen this one up a quarter turn. As you can see, it's already loose. What's going on YouTube? I'm going to welcome back to the channel. Well in today's video we're actually going to get started tearing the Sportster motor apart. It's one of those I do want to thank Saddle Tramp for giving me the opportunity you know to go down there and actually work with him on a soft tail a couple months ago because with his knowledge and helping work on it I kind of have a pretty good understanding of what we're going to be doing so let's get started. Alright so in order to get the seat off as most Harleys and stuff like that at the back of it, you've got a little Phillips head screw that you got to take out. So the first thing we need to do in order to take our fuel tank off is we're going to want to make sure that our fuel is cut off. And then we're going to have to take the hose off right here that is going to our fuel tap. So let's get this hose right here off for the fuel. Now that we have the fuel line off, I've actually on this model Sportster, I actually have a vacuum hose that's hooked onto the back side of the fuel tap. Unfortunately, I can't get to it right now. So let me show you how to get the two bolts out, one in the front and one on the rear. And hopefully after I've removed those and kind of lift the tank up a little bit, I can get to that vacuum hose. All right, so the two bolts I was just referring to, one of them's right here in the front. Here's the bolt on, you know, that goes through. And then right down here, hopefully you can see it right underneath there, is where the other bolt for the back side of the fuel tank. And then over here on this side is where the nut is, kind of in the same location. So there's the nut for the back side. And then, of course, pretty obvious, here's the nut for the front side. So those bolts are going to be half inch on both the bolt side and on the nut side. Alright, so here's what I was talking about about the vacuum hose. I just barely picked it up and it come loose. But the vacuum hose is hooked up right, that's the vacuum hose. And back here in the back is where it's hooked up at, right there. Ah, and as you see, don't forget about your little vent tube right here. And it just pulls straight off. So in order to get further on into the project, we're going to take our air cleaner off. And depending on how your air cleaner is, this is kind of stock, I think, more or less. So I've got two Phillips head screws right here that's holding the air cleaner on. All right, so the next thing is to take our air filter off. And mine just pulls right out. So for right now, I'm not really wanting to take our actual carburetor off. So for now, in order to get the rest of the breather cover off, you're going to take these three screws off right here, which are 530 seconds. And our two big Allens that are actually holding the breather cover and the carburetor in to the intake is going to be a 5 16 
Now that we've got our breather and kind of all this area cleaned out so we can get at more access to it, let's take our upper valve cover off and you got four Allen bolts right here. And these four Allens are 3 16 And if you're wondering why I'm kind of focusing on the rear cylinder, the rear cylinder is one that I have zero compression in. So that's the one that I'm kind of wanting to figure out what's going on. Because of how close this bolt is to the frame, I'm actually going to have to use my actual Allen wrench instead of using the 3 8 Allen that I was using. So now that we got all four bolts loose, let's see if we can pry this upper valve cover off from the middle valve cover. Now that we have our upper valve cover off, let's get our middle valve cover off and all you should have to do is just pick it up a little bit and just kind of shimmy it out. Just like that. So the next thing you need to do according to the manual is after you've taken that upper and middle valve covers off, you're going to want to put the transmission into fifth gear and you're going to want to rotate your rear wheel in order to have both valves on the, whatever cylinder you're working on closed. And so I've got it in fifth gear and I'm going to rotate it and I'll show you the valves moving up and down here in just a second. Now that we got the bike in fifth gear, we've got our spark plugs taken out. We can start moving our rear wheel and as you'll watch right here, your valves will actually be moving up and down. So this one right here is going to be moving down and then back up. And then this one right here will move down and back up. What we're going to do is have them both all the way at the top so that our valves are loose. So that on the rear one for the exhaust is going down. And now the intake is going down. And now we're at top dead center on the rear cylinder. So both of them are loose. Now that we have our valves loose, we can actually start taking our work arms loose. And in order to do that, you're going to actually use these two bolts right here, which are half inch bolts that you need to take out. So on this other side, you actually have two of the same half inch bolts right here in the center. And then on your outside, you got a 3 16 Allen right there and another 3 16 Allen right down here that's holding the rest of your rocker arms on. All right, so let's start with our two inner. And now we'll do our two outer. And by the looks of it, this back one, we're going to have to use a regular Allen wrench like we kind of had to do with the bolt up here for the valve cover. All right, now that we have the, the outside loosened up, we can actually take off the one's on the inside and these right here are going to be seven six inch you got one right here one here in the center and then another one back here in the back these two in the real middle are you're not going to be able to use an extension but at least with this one you can use an extension to help get to it Now that we have all those bolts out, we should be able to pry our rocker arm cover off and it should come right out. Just like that. Can get out of here. Get it restored. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull the push rods out so that I have some clearance to try to maneuver it out on this side. So that's our rear push, cup, push rod. And there's our front push rod. And just like that, oh, I got the rocker arm assembly out of the thing. So one thing I like to do is I've always put bolts back in the spot they are after I take them off. So as you can see, I have all the bolts kind of lined up where they come out. And now I'm actually going to put them back exactly where I found them. That kind of keeps the bolts because of different lengths and stuff like that. Not getting lost and, you know, it's just easier to put it back on when you know the bolts and the lengths are in the correct location. All right, so in order to test your actual push rod to see if it's bent or anything, get a piece of glass or something that you know that is pretty straight and then set it on there and then roll it, roll it across it and see if you see it wobble. Well, this one, unfortunately, I don't see a wobble. So this was the one on the exhaust side, so this one's still straight. So this is the one that was on the intake, so let's roll it across our glass here. As you saw, it's pretty flat, so this one right here is not bent either. So unfortunately, I don't have a bent push rod. So I forgot to mention a second ago how I actually labeled the intake and exhaust push rods right here. That way I can make sure that, I, one, I've got them going back in the right location, but two, that I'm also putting them on the rear cylinder. As you can see, they are a slight bit difference in the lengths of them. So it is important to make sure that you put the white one in the right location and I want to make sure that I put the rear where the rear was. Alright, since I didn't have a vent push rod, I guess I'm going to have to keep on going, tearing more into the motor to see if I can figure out what was going on. On this side, we're actually going to have to take my horn, the choke cable, and also the upper engine mount right here. We're going to have to take all those loose and off in order to get the actual cylinder heads off right here. As you can see, the engine mount, is, the upper engine mount, is actually connected right here on both cylinder heads. So in order to unplug your horn wiring harness, you have them plugged in right here on the side and back here on the back side and they're just two spade connectors that you have to unplug. And now we're going to just ride them out of the way. Now that we have our horn electrical disconnected, we can actually use a half inch socket or half inch wrench and loosen the nut right here that's holding our horn on. Now that we have our horn out of the way, we actually use a 11 16 wrench and reach in here behind the motor mount and loosen up our choke cable so that we can get it out of the way. Just like that. All right, and the next thing we need to do is take this half inch bolt out that is holding on the back side your VOES system. And we'll show you that more when I get to the other side taking the carburetor off. But for now, let's go ahead and take this bolt out and we'll let the VOES hang down right here. Now that we have that loose, we can take our four 5 16 Allen bolts out, one right here, one over on the other cylinder head, and then two up here at the very top.
So what the two Allen bolts on your upper motor mount were bolted into is right here on the frame inside this little channel is a little plate that they were bolted into. And as you can see, it's got the, it's what the, basically is holding the two nuts on is that little plate. All right, now that we've got this side disconnected, let's switch over to the other side and start working on that side. All right, now that we're back on this side, the first thing we're going to do is actually going to be removing our exhaust. And if you remember, you have two half-inch nuts that are actually holding our exhaust flange on. And then down here, on the back side, you actually have a bolt. Mine is half-inch, but yours, mine's kind of been changed. But that's what's holding the back of your exhaust, kind of giving it some support. Alright, so the first step to start getting our carburetors off is we need to loosen our throttle cables. In order to do that, mine are aftermarket, so, you know, stock may be a little different, but uh, mine's a 5 16 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the jam nut, and then I'm going to screw the adjuster all the way in. And as you see, I've already sprayed some WD-40 on here to kind of help with the rust that's developed. All right, now with all of our slack, we should be able to just barely pull up the throttle cable and slide it out of the holder, just like I just did. There's one of them. So your back throttle cable, if you'll remember when you pull it up, you actually still have a spring that's here in the ferrule that you'll need to pick up in order to get the throttle cable through the little slot that's in the holder. So use a little pick kind of like this to kind of reach in here and into that slot on this side to pick that spring up. And there's the spring I was talking about. And then you can slide it out of the little slot. All right, we got both throttle cables loose. So here's that VOES system that I was talking about. In order to disconnect this, we're actually just going to unplug our electrical connector right here. And then the rest of it should come when we take the carburetor loose. All right, with our throttle cables loose and our VOES unplugged, we should be able to just pull our carburetor straight off because of what's holding the carburetor on is your actual breather cover with the two holes right or the two Allens right here and your three holes right here. So now we should be able to get the carburetor out. So just kind of wiggle it just a little bit and. Oh. Route your overflow hose. And there you go. All right, so to get our actual intake manifold loose, we got four Allens that are quarter inch Allens, two on this side, and then you have two here on this bottom side. The ones on this side, you're not going to be able to use a long reach Allen like this. We're going to have to use just a regular, you know, Allen wrench to get in here. But as you can see, these are slotted, so we should be able to just loosen these up just a little bit and take those two off on the other side and be able to pull it all the way out. So I'm going to start on this side and loosen these two.
All right, so I about started messing this one up, so I reverted back to just using a regular Allen wrench on this side, and on this side, I'm gonna to try to use the same thing, but I should be able to get them loose now that I've got them in there a little further. All right, there's this one on this side. Let's try to get the other side. All right, now that we have our two bolts out here on the front side of our intake manifold, I'm gonna use a little screwdriver to kind of get back here behind the intake flange. That way it loosens it up on both sides. All right, and there goes our intake manifold. In order to get access to our cylinder head bolts, I've got two protective covers right here that I'm going to have to take off. These are going to be kind of different for probably each application, depending on how accessorized your bike is. So I'm not really going to go over how to take them off. Most of them have some type of Allen bolt or Allen set screw on the back to hold them on. All right, so I'm going to show you a little diagram right here. But basically how to loosen your actual cylinder head bolts is we're going to start right here, and this is going to be number one, number two, over here is going to be number three, and then number four. And these are going to be half inch bolts, and you're going to want to use a 12 point socket so that it fits on here very good. Um, it's one of those that you're not going to tighten, or you're not going to loosen these all the way up one at a time. You're going to actually be going like an eighth of a turn every turn and then coming back in eighth of a turn and then eighth of a turn until all of them are loose. All right, like I was just talking about, what I'm going to be using to loosen those up is I've got a three quarter inch drive right here and I've got an adapter to half inch. And as you can see, I've got actually a half inch socket, 12 points. That way it fits on here good. I'm hoping that I can use this three quarter inch drive instead of having to get a cheetah bar. And once again, I'm only going an eighth of a turn. So there's that one. that one all right so I went to loosen this one up a quarter turn as you can see it's already loose so I'm thinking I may found somewhat what the problem is so I'm gonna loot uh, this since this one's already loose I'm gonna go on and go to this one right here all right so I don't have the clearance right here to use my three-quarter inch drive so I'm having to use my half inch drive with a long breaker bar And once again, I'm still going to go an eighth of a turn, even though this one's completely loose, just to hopefully kind of salvage the head. All right, now that we got all four of them loose, we should be able to just barely pull it off, just like so. All right, so as you can see, I actually blew the head gasket because there's no gasket material right here at all. And it's also not on the cylinder head. Now that we have the actual cylinder heads off, I still need to take the jugs off because I know for a fact that I was leaking my base gaskets on the other side. So in order to do that, what we need to do is actually rotate the piston to the bottom of the rotation to what they call bottom dead center in order to have enough clearance to get the jug off without having to take the piston off.
All right, and that's how we want it to look. Now that we have it at bottom dead center, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to tap it on each side with this rubber mallet, and hopefully it will loosen up from the engine case. Just like so. Because the base gasket is also leaking on the front cylinder, I'm actually going to go ahead and take the entire front cylinder apart as well. And because of the fact that from the valve cover down to the base gasket is going to be the exact same on the front cylinder as it is on the rear cylinder, I'm not really going to show you all that on video. I am, however, going to show you the few things about the front cylinder that you need to be aware of if you're also taking the front cylinder off. To begin with, on the front cylinder, when you go to do it, you're actually going to need to make sure that as you bring in the piston up, like we did on the rear cylinder, that you bring it up to almost top dead center where your valves are loose. So that is very key, kind of like we did just on the rear cylinder. You're going to need to do that also on your front cylinder. So as you can see with your key and also your ignition coil and everything right here, with it still in place, you don't have enough room to actually get your valve covers off. Plus, if you do get your valve covers off, you'll be fighting around it. So let's go ahead and take all of this apart. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually take the key lock off. And it's going to be an eighth inch Allen, and it's right here on the very top. Alright, now that we got the key kind of set up here out of the way, we should have enough room to actually rotate our ignition coil all the way around to the top side as well. That way we're not having to fight with it right here above the valve cover. So the next thing we're going to actually be doing is we're actually going to be removing our exhaust off our front cylinder. Now this process is going to vary depending on what year Evo Sportster you actually have and also if you have mid controls or forward controls. So the process is going to be very similar but you know kind of take a look at your bike and see what it's going to require. But on my particular year I've got a 95 and I've got forward controls in order to get to the rear to the front exhaust mounting nut right here i actually need to remove my rear master cylinder so in order to do that you're actually going to be removing these two bolts right here and they're actually going to be quarter inch allens Now that we have the two allen bolts out of the way, to give us a little bit more slack and a little bit more room to play with, we actually need to take this bolt right here out and it's a quarter inch. Now that we've got some more access, we actually can remove our mount for our front exhaust. It's going to be a three quarter inch nut that is holding it on back here. Now that we have the nut that was holding our exhaust onto the mount, we can actually start removing the two nuts that is holding our exhaust to the actual jug. And they are right here. Alright, so you have one half inch nut that's sitting right here. And then on the other side of the frame rail, we actually have another half inch nut that's sitting right there. Now this one on this side, you're probably going to have to use a wrench. But this one on this side, you can get to with a socket. So the last thing till we get to everything that's going to be the same, like I said, from the valve cover down to the base gasket, is that we need to actually remove this front motor mount. 
is going to be a 9 16 and you have one bolt that goes into the jug on this side and then you have a nut that goes into it on this side now to help make this a lot easier where you're not fighting with it so between that bolt and that nut on the bottom side where you're looking at is actually two more bolts so let's take the three bolts out and the one nut out and we'll go from there and once again these are 9 16 And so that is actually sitting on the top side of where we were just loosening those two bolts up. Right down in there between the uh, cylinder wall and the frame rail, right in that little cubby. All right, so using a 9 16 wrench, let's get this last nut off. All right, so as you saw, because of clearance right here, I don't have enough room to get this nut completely off. But that's okay because now it's loose um, and when I take the actual jug off, it'll actually come off with it, so it's not a big deal. But we did need to have at least the three bolts off that we took off. So once again, as you can see, it wasn't a very hard process to do this. You know, I mean, I did help Saddle Tramp out with his, but I was also following the manual at the same time and once I got started, I realized it wasn't as daunting of a task as I initially thought it would be. So once I get the front cylinder all tore apart, I'm actually gonna take both heads, the front and rear heads, and I'm gonna go get them reworked. That way I've got, you know, fresh valve work and everything else done. And that way I know I'm gonna have good compression when I get done, you know. And as you know, once I get those back, I'm gonna have some more videos to create because I want to show you how to put all this back together. Um, I don't know really if I'm going to change out the lifters or not. We'll kind of see. It just depends on how I feel. But, you know, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And leave me a comment. Y'all let me know if you thought that this was a very good how-to. And, you know, as I have said in most of my videos, y'all tell me how I can do better at these videos. You know, I really do appreciate the feedback. And, you know, I very much cherish those feedbacks because it kind of helps me get better. And, uh, you know, share this with some of your friends. You know, share this with some people that you may see has a leaking base gasket on their Sportster. You know, it's, as you can see, it's not a very hard process. So until the next video, always take the single route, and I'll see y'all then.